And now we're recording. So again, welcome everybody for this uh, webcast. Today I want to show you how to use Microsoft OneNote as a tool in the circle for documentation. For those of you who have been in the last webcast, uh, we discussed, um, oh, there's some noise. I just mute the others. Okay, so now everybody's muted. Uh, if you want to ask a question, just unmute yourself, should be possible. Um, for those of you who were in the last webcast, we discussed uh, using the canvas, this one sheet of paper on how to plan circle goals and so on. And uh, then there came some requests on how to use um, OneNote for documentation in a circle. So I said, okay, we make another webcast where I show how I use OneNote. Um, and this is uh, the, the agenda I planned for today. I just will give you a short introduction uh, on the topic. Also talk a little bit about OneNote in the context of Office 365, because I think uh, quite a lot of organizations and individuals are start using Office 365. And there's especially this Microsoft Teams tool in combination with OneNote, which can be very nicely used for organizing a circle in terms of uh, documentation and uh, also communication in the circle. Um, and then uh, I think the main part today is that I will show you a circle template, a template for OneNote that I use uh, quite often in circles uh, for documentation. I will show you this uh, template in action, like how I use it. Uh, and you can also download it afterwards if you want to experiment with it. The good thing with OneNote is if you say it doesn't fit your needs, you can just change it or uh, change the structure, the content and so on. Uh, we will then we'll see how much people we get. Uh, last time we had a small discussion in, in small groups for five minutes. What are the pros and cons of uh, using OneNote in such a circle? Um, I think when we're 20 or so, we will split up in groups of five, discuss it, and then have an open ask me anything question where you can give feedback or your ideas or how you use OneNote. Uh, we will put together this in the last um, 20 minutes or so. So just as a, as a short introduction, uh, I'm Simon Dückert. For those uh, of you who don't know me, I come from Nuremberg. I won't read through all the bullet points. I come from the field of uh, knowledge management and learning organizations. Um, things like working out loud uh, fits for me in the context of personal knowledge management, like how do I deal with my knowledge? How do I connect with other experts and so on? Uh, I was part of the 15 founding members of the German Working Out Loud community, and I created this, uh, the canvas and also the OneNote template and the Lanos guide um, for practicing cir circles in a, quite another style, like, like Working Out Loud, but similar uh, last year, in the beginning of this year. Um, I just... Just a few words on, on, on Lano S, that, where the name comes from for this webcast as well. Lano is Esperanto and means I will learn or we will learn. It's the future of learning. And it's kind of an operating system for lifelong learning and learning organizations. And it takes sort of principles and, and parts of uh, methods like getting things done, objective key results and working it out loud and brings them together in a coherent approach. And, and one part of it is practicing in circles. Uh, like the VOL circles came from the Lean-In circles, uh, mastermind groups, peer support groups in the end. And uh, this is why I think that the circle template can be used in any kind of circle practice, uh, also in, in working out loud circles. So much for the introduction. Why do I think that uh, thinking about tools is important in, in circles? Uh, at the moment, since four weeks or so, I run the first international working out loud survey. Uh, I try to collect uh, feedback and experiences from circles. And there's one question, so far 122 person answered. Uh, there's one question, uh, if the circle you're in meets face to face or virtual or uh, a combination of both, but more virtual or more face to face. And as you can see in the bullet points, 36% uh, of circles meet only virtual they don't have a physical meeting. None of the 12 meetings are physical. And um, uh, only 15% of circles meet only face-to-face. -face. So one can say that 85% of the circles have at least a, a virtual experience. They have to meet in the virtual room. They have to communicate and document uh, in the virtual room. And this is why I think that um, 
thinking about tool support for circular organization uh, brings some value to the community uh, in terms of having not the same experience like in face-to-face, -face, but uh, as good as possible, so to say. If you want to participate, the survey runs until uh, end of August. I will publish the, the results afterwards. You can find the link on the bottom of the slide. Okay, a little bit context about OneNote. Uh, OneNote is uh, on the one hand part of the Office Suite, Microsoft Office Suite. If you have Office 213, Office 216, uh, chances are that you have OneNote on your PC. You can check it, it looks similar uh, to Word. It's just this, this purple style and has a, another letter on it, but it looks quite similar. And if you have an instance of Office 365 for yourself or in your organization, uh, you have it as, as part of Office 365. It's one of the services there. Uh, so this is one thing I would mainly talk about today. Uh, the other thing is, is down below on the left-hand side, Microsoft Teams. Uh, for those of you who know Slack, for example, or HipChat, uh, it's sort of a chat-based collaboration tool. I will show you a, screen a screenshot afterwards uh, for those of you who don't know what it is. Um, and uh, the interesting thing for me is that uh, you have on the one hand side um, uh, a chat tool for having all the, the communication with the circle members, like when do we meet, uh, I'm, I have problems with this exercise. It's similar to a WhatsApp group in a school, for example, or Facebook Messenger group. Uh, you have video conferencing support, so you can run your circle meetings uh, with Microsoft Teams, like you do it with Skype or WebEx or something else. And you can have a OneNote notebook as part of um, uh, one team, so to say. So you have all your the tools you use in the circle in one place, uh, which I think makes it a lot easier, at least for not so uh, web experienced people uh, to uh, have everything uh, in few and don't get confused with uh, the lots of tools that, that are used in the circle. Uh, just a short overview of OneNote. Uh, I just brought my the last version of my Moleskin book, or Moleskin, I don't know what, what the right pronunciation is. Uh, until five years ago, I, I used these paper books. Um, then I switched to a personal wiki system and uh, used them alongside, like I had notes that I took on paper and, and notes that I took digitally. And when I switched from the personal wiki to OneNote, I totally removed the paper notebook, so I only have a digital one. And uh, this is what you can see OneNote as. OneNote is a tool for managing digital notebooks. As I said, it's part of Microsoft Office or Office 365. Uh, it's similar to Evernote, perhaps one or another is using Evernote. Um, it's quite similar, but I think more powerful. Um, a notebook can be structured by uh, sections, pages and subpages. So it's quite similar like a paper book. Uh, interesting thing is that the, the content on the pages can be multimedia. It can be text, it can be images, it can be video, it can be audio. Uh, that's why OneNote is also used as a learning tool a lot, like uh, having a mini learning management system in one OneNote notebook. It's a typical use case for that tool as well. Uh, if you have a OneNote notebook on a SharePoint server or OneDrive, OneDrive is similar to Dropbox or uh, Google Drive, uh, Everybody who looks at the notebook can edit it at the same time. This means when you're in a circle meeting, for example, and someone is uh, editing his um, relationship list, for example, all the other guys in the circle see it. And I can put a comment on it. I can uh, help people write a comment. Uh, I have this relationship. Perhaps this helps with your goal as well. Um, so this is the same experience like perhaps you know from uh, editing a Google Doc or uh, Etherpad at the same time. It's synchronous editing. Uh, there are several ways how you can use uh, OneNote. There's a desktop app um, which you run like Microsoft Word on your desktop. Uh, there's a web app that you can run on a browser on any PC or any client you're connecting from. And there's also a mobile app. So this means you have the whole documentation for your circle uh, in an app. Like uh, I don't have my mobile phone with me at the moment, uh, but I have the OneNote app on, on an iPhone. Uh, and if I have an idea during traveling uh, regarding another relationship I want to add to my relationship list, I don't have to put it on paper and, and put it in my documentation afterwards. I just took out the smartphone and type it in and it's in the relationship list. Everybody in my circle gets notified that I uh, edited my uh, documentation, so to say. Um, 
Now for the template, the, the main part, um, I, I, I started with using enterprise social networks for doing the documentation in circles and uh, then switched over to OneNote. Um, and I used a lot of the, the structure and the templating from the ESN, which was mainly Chive or IBM Connections, sometimes Yammer. Uh, to the to the one node structure, I will plan it, explain it in detail uh, in a few seconds. Uh, the basic idea is that you have one notebook where the whole documentation for the the whole circle lives in. Uh, every circle member has its own page uh, or pages. If you want to, you can have as as many pages as you want to. Uh, there's a facilitators checklist inside uh, that helps the facilitator to organize the whole circle, like when when the meetings are. Uh, which exercises were done, and so on. You, you can check it inside OneNote. Uh, then I also copied the whole uh, exercises inside, like from the Lanos guide. You can also do it with the wall guide if you have the license to do it. Uh, so the uh, circle members have the documentation for the exercises inside the tool, the mobile tool you use for running the circle, which in my opinion is very helpful. If I have half an hour sitting at the railway station or in the plane or somewhere, I can just check what the, the task for the next week is and do it there. And, and I have everything in this OneNote document. If you want to, I share the, the slides later on. There's this link. Uh, I put the, the OneNote template on GitHub. Um, there's this one P, P KG format, I don't know if this is right. Uh, this is sort of a .x uh, document in Word, it's a template. So if you download it and you click on it, your OneNote is opening and uh, you're able to uh, put, uh, open this new OneNote in your OneNote client. Uh, right, the link is also in the chat. Ah, okay, it's the chat. Okay, so, uh, just another uh, few screenshots, uh, what we do in this OneNote, then I go over to the live demonstration in a few seconds. Um, uh, just one example on the left, we use it for having an overview which participant in the, in the circle is taking part in which of the circle meetings. So you have a circle here on the left with three persons, Leonid, Simon, uh, which is me, and Till. Uh, we have the dates of our weeks. And we just indicate who's participating in which circle, and then we decide in the checkouts of the weekly meetings uh, when only two of the three guys will be in the next uh, circle meeting. If we skip it, if we if we uh, like, what is it? Postpone it, like have another uh, date, and then uh, our timetable shifts one week uh, later on, or if we just run the circle anyways. Uh, so it's very easy for coordination in the circle without having to send around a lot of emails and so on. Uh, on the left, you can see in, in one of my circles, uh, my page, where I just put a current uh, photo of my canvas. So all the other circle, circle members can see my canvas at any time. And then we have this documentation with goal and objectives and relationship lists and so on. I will show you the, this in a second uh, in the live template. Just a few sentences about uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, as I said, it's chat-based collaboration. It's similar to Slack. Uh, you can use it with a desktop app and mobile app as well. Um, a OneNote template can be, or OneNote notebook, uh, better to say, can be part of a team. So it's sort of your team, you communicate in the team, you can chat there, uh, but you always have your OneNote inside the team as well. And what I think is very good is uh, you have integrated video conferencing inside. Uh, this means that I uh, just put the... Um, the, the dates for the circle meetings there, uh, the participants of the circle just have to click uh, on the uh, participate and then you're inside the video conference. If you want to, you can also record it. If someone's not, not available, you record it and it just gets, the video gets uh, published to the timeline of the, the chat of Microsoft Team. So I think it's a, it's a nice integrated solution for supporting circles. Uh, if you ask if you have to pay for it, uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, Microsoft released a free version similar to Zoom or Slack. Uh, you can have a team with up to 300 people for free. Uh, if you're interested, I can put the, the link later on in the chat as well. But just have a look in the chat if there is, no, everything's resolved. Thanks Magnus for handling the chat so well. Um, just a few screenshots here as well. You can see on the upper left, um, 
uh, a current screenshot of, of the team as of a circle I run right now, where we just exchange um, links and images according to the goals the circle members have. And you can see on the lower left uh, a date, like I just copy pasted the agenda for the circle meeting here, the, uh, the, um, the issues or the topics of the circles are linked to the to the exercises so everybody can click on the exercises up front and see what what is the homework for the circle so to say and you can click on the event uh, as i said and then you're inside the video conference immediately and i just put a screenshot of the um, mobile experience on the right hand side you see the the um, iphone app for example and you can see the whole the, the same content you have on the desktop app and you have on the mobile app. I think you know that from, from other tools like Facebook groups and so on. So enough uh, introduction. I hopefully uh, can switch now to the live demonstration of the template. Perhaps one short note in the chat if this works. Do you see the, the OneNote template now? Yes, very good. Yes, double yes, okay. Okay, as you saw in the, uh, in the presentation, um, we have on the one hand side, on the left hand here, I have multiple notebooks, like I can handle a lot such books. I have a personal one, I have several notebooks for uh, projects for my organization. And we are now here in the circle template notebook. So this is here, the navigation over here. Then you can see here these uh, sections uh, over here. Uh, the notebook is organized in sections and in each sections you have pages which you see on the right here. So for example, the circle facilitator checklist, uh, the, the exercises for week one and so on. And I will just uh, show you all the, the areas, all the sections of the notebook. Um, we have one sort of welcome page when uh, someone, normally a circle facilitator, downloads the, the OneNote template, you have sort of a welcome page which explains how the whole notebook works, like uh, what you can do with it, what the sections are. It's the enumer enumerated list over here where everything is explained. There's this welcome section. Then there's the section for circle members. We will have a look inside in a second. Uh, we'll have a, a getting started. Uh, in LanOS, we practice with the week zero. Week zero is for uh, the planning of the whole um, sprint of the whole 12 weeks, like what the dates are, which tools we use for meeting and so on. So this is the, the getting started uh, section. Then weeks one to 11 with all the exercises and then the retrospective in week 12. These are the, the three sections over here. And at the end, uh, some important links regarding Lanaris, getting things done, working out loud. So you have all the links together. If you want to just check the TEDx video by John, you have the link over there. Um, also important for you, uh, all the content that is released uh, under the Lanaris label is uh, so-called free cultural works. It's published under a Creative Commons uh, attribution license. So this means you can download it, you can remix it, you can modify it. If anything in the work in the, in the notebook does not look like you want it to have or you want to change it, go ahead. That's uh, what it's made for. Uh, I just skipped the circle members section. Uh, we will have, we, I will talk about that uh, at the end. Uh, I will show you the uh, getting started section. I make this a little bigger. Um, so in the getting started section, you have all the, the introduction for week zero. Uh, you have the agenda over here. This is the agenda for the meeting with the times inside. And you can see here, this is a, a function of OneNote. Uh, checklist function. Uh, if you like have one thing done, you can just check it. Uh, it's like on a paper list. It's a good feeling if you strike out the tasks that are finished. If you want to, you can also synchronize this with uh, Outlook tasks, for example, if you use that. I I'm not doing it, but uh, you can too if you want to. And uh, for example, one task uh, in the, in the sprint planning is to define who the facilitator is or what date and time the meeting is. If the meetings are face-to-face -face or virtual, which tools are used in the circle. 
uh, and you can put the names of the, the circuit facilitator or the, the regular meeting date and time over here. Uh, so you won't forget it. And if someone was not part of the, the week zero experience, for example, he can just look this up and you see what, what was decided on. It's typical project management or event management, so to say. Uh, I switch to just have a look in the, in the chat. Okay, nothing for me. Uh, week one to 11. Uh, the first page over here is the so-called circuit facilitator checklist. So you have uh, for each week, the, the name of the week, the short introduction, the agenda, uh, where you can check here what you have done as well. Uh, sometimes, I don't know how, how you run your circles, sometimes um, we, you're not able to finish an exercise in a, um, in a circle. And then you have to, to decide if uh, circle members have to do it as a homework uh, or if you just skip it so you can like strike it out here or you can indicate we haven't done that so far so we have to have another circle uh, meeting, for example, to run the exercise we, we skipped. Uh, and if you scroll down here, it's just the, the uh, 11 weeks, week um, 1 to 11. Like I said in the in the section, uh, I also put for the ones who are practicing with the, with the wall guides, working out loud guides, the links to the individual guides here. I cannot copy content from the wall guide in the OneNote uh, document because that's copyrighted; it's not allowed. But if you when you practice working out loud in a private context, or if your organization bought the license to use it, then you can of course download the OneNote template and just remix it or modify it with the, with the wall exercises as well. All the weeks here work in the same logic, uh, so to say. You can see the, the, um, the headings are linked. So I can just click on the link and I, I come directly to this page, week one. And then you see the exercises uh, for week one also further information and so on. And so you have any, everything, every exercise that has to be done in week one uh, on this page. You can go back to the facilitator checklist. If, you, if you've done the exercise in the, in the circle, you can check it and you can go uh, to the next exercise. And all the weeks, uh, week two, three, four, and so on, it's, it's all the same principle so to say you have the content of the exercises there and you can just uh, work with it use it as a workbook perhaps you know these workbooks from school um, it's the same procedure so to say same counts for uh, week 12 as well um, then we have this link section at the end um, where I try to collect the most important links for LanOS itself, like the user group, the Twitter handle, the feedback on feeder.io, uh, but also for getting things done, also for objective key results, also for working out loud. I will try to extend that in the future because on a at least daily basis, there are new links on Twitter and so on. I try to curate it a little so you have the most important links over here. So the last but uh, also very important thing I want to show you is this uh, circle members section, the second section here in the notebook. Mm. As you can see here, we have five pages, member one to five. So uh, the implication is that we have in the circle five members. Of course, when you're only uh, four, you can just delete one page. Uh, if, you, if you are six or seven, you can just copy a page and have also a member six or seven there as well. And all the, um, the content on this page uh, is formatted in a way that it uh, correlates with the results from the exercises you practice. So for example, when you, uh, when you do your, uh, your goal, you define your goal in World Week 1 or Lenos Week 1, uh, here you have the field where you can just write down your goal. You have it physically written over there, if you do it the learner style, then you have objective and key results over there, like you saw in the presentation before. But the idea here is that you have this one place where your documentation for the circle lives. Because I, in the past, I had uh, quite, quite some people in circles uh, who wrote down their goal in week one uh, on a printed version of the, of the guide, for example. And then we were in week two and they didn't remember what their goal is. So they had to look up this paper and so on. So the basic idea here is that every member has his page where you can document things like the goal from week one, the first relationship list, the social networks you use, and so on and so on. 
And of course, if you want to, you can also write your letter to your future self here. If you, if you do this exercise, uh, you can also add an additional page, for example. This is quite easy. Everywhere I go here, for example, member one, I get this little plus. I can just add another, um, another page, for example, a letter, oh, just a moment, letter to my future self. Uh, and you can also have sort of a hierarchy of pages. If I just go here uh, and use this as a sub page, sorry, it's a German OneNote version, or go here with the mouse and just drag it a little uh, to the right, then you have a sub page and you can also like collapse it and expand it. It works somehow like you're perhaps uh, are used with working with the file system here. And of course you can have uh, your relationship list as a separate list if you want to. Uh, the template only has one page per person. If you need more, you can extend it. That's a good thing with the, in contrast to a paper workbook, you can just add uh, as much pages as you want to inside. Okay, that's the whole uh, template. What I do, I just show you uh, how this works. I, this, this, this template lives in my OneNote client. Uh, then I use this uh, file export export the whole notebook as one pgg uh, file this one i can save on my computer and i think this on github this is how the current version of the one note template like comes to the github page where you can download it and and use it and modify it if you use it and have good ideas on how to improve it i would be happy if you put it on feeder io or twitter or send me an email or something so this can uh, improve continuously over time so I switch back to the demonstration uh, and I just, yeah, I, I don't have any other content uh, before we switch in, in small groups and discuss this a little bit, but uh, I want to give you the chance if you have some questions regarding the things I showed that you just open your mic and, and you can ask the question now if something is unclear or something you like or dislike, uh, perhaps we spend a minute or two on that questions. I see in the in the chat, um, Ben asked if the chat boxes in, in weekly one to elf, uh, 11 are for the group or the individual. Uh, I just showed to you it's it's for the for the group. So if you're here, this is the facilitators checklist. So this means if I check all this for me as a facilitator, this means uh, week one is finished. We did everything, uh, we did all the exercises. So for example, if I have a week one like this, I see, okay, we, we did not do the exercise people related to your objectives. Uh, and then we have to decide if we do it between the sessions, if we spend another weekly on just doing this, this exercise, there are different philosophies on, on how to run a circle. Uh, I normally do it like like you run a school class. If someone's sick and is not in school, you have to redo the homework because otherwise you uh, the 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 weekly meetings shift from shift from one week to another. Then there's holidays and so on, and it's uh, pretty difficult to get the circle in sync uh, afterwards. Uh, but that's a kind of philosophy. It can be also done in another way. Yes, of course. And Ma Magnus uh, posted you can. Just have to see if I mute. Uh, okay, if you want to, you can unmute yourself uh, and ask the question. I just checked if I uh, took the right from you, but you were able to. Um, Magnus said that you can uh, copy the page to your personal section. I think this will be a future enhancement as well, that you don't, own, don't have just a facilitator's checklist in the OneNote, but you also have a circle members checklist that you can personally use to check if you did your homework. Like uh, for me, for example, my the tasks I have as a member in the circle, they live in Microsoft To Do, which is a To Do app. Perhaps other other guys use To Do is or Remember Your Milk or something like that. Uh, but in a future version of the OneNote, there will be a circle members checklist as well. Yes, we had the uh, sections for every um, member in our last uh, working out loud circle uh, in in the one note, and uh, th this was why I uh, had this idea um, to have the copy the the, the list to every uh, person. So, yeah, right. 
Right. It's a little bit tricky because uh, the the circle the circle member section at the moment uh, only has uh, headings for exercises that produce a certain kind of a result that it's documented. Uh, if you have an exercise where you only reflect on something or think about something, you don't have a you don't have a heading here because there's no artifact produced. But I think it's a good idea to expand this uh, circle members section to uh, to have it as sur sort of a circle members checklist as well, not only a facilitators checklist. Yeah, maybe have not the the section circle members, but have one section for for every uh, member, and then uh, under this section, every member can uh, have his uh, own pages and uh, maybe have more more information. We we, we have for for every week we had some um, some some page per person. Yeah. It's a, it's a little bit, uh, uh, you have to decide uh, according to usability, because if you, if you use it on the iPhone app, for example, it's more clicks if you want to change sections, uh, as in comparison yeah. to change pages. So you have to decide how far the content of the other circle members should be away. What, what I like is when I have three or four or five people in a circle, that I'm relatively quickly at the documentation of the others just to check if something changed with their goals and so on. Uh, and therefore I just keep all the members in one section, but of course you can, you can split them and have five sections for five members. You're free to do that. It's just, you have this plus sign over here. I can just say here, um, member two, for example, uh, member two, and then put it over here. If you want to indicate it by colors, you can change the color and then you can have one section per member, for example, it's possible as well. Just delete it again. Uh, I saw the question of uh, Marcus, is it possible to import checklists in to do? No, a pity it's not. <laughs> uh, what, you, what you can do is, um, if, you, if you're here in OneNote, you can uh, you can indicate a task to be a Outlook task and then it, it's uh, exported to Outlook. You have it in Outlook, but it's not possible with to do yet. I think Microsoft will do it somewhere in the future, but at the moment it's not. Okay, so perhaps... Maybe, the, maybe, yeah. maybe um, someone, uh, yep. there, there's one, one tip for the, I, I think. Uh, if you have to do linked to your Outlook, you can do this, what you said, uh, check it as an Outlook task. All my Outlook tasks at the moment um, go to my to-do list. Okay, you can do this sync uh, from Outlook to do-do, right? Yeah. yeah. Right, but you, can, you, can you assign it to a to-do list in, in uh to do for those of you who don't know what we talk about, uh, perhaps now you can see Microsoft to do. Uh, you have the uh, uh, tool where you have to do lists over here. So, for example, here I have a category with my Lanois to dos, uh, also for administration stuff and, and, and things like that. And um, what Magnus is saying that the Outlook tasks are synchronizing with this to do list. So, it's a good, uh, a good tip. I will look f uh, deeper in it. Uh, how we can generate Outlook, uh, no, OneNote to-dos that are synchronized to do-do. But I'm not sure how many people who use the OneNote template also use a to-do list in Microsoft to-do. So perhaps it's a good thing for the welcome page to explain how it works and have a OneNote only solution and a OneNote plus Outlook and to-do solution. Yep, yep. Okay, so uh, like I said, uh, let's split a little in, in groups. I will. I will split you up in groups of five now and please discuss in five minutes. What, what do you see as an advantage of using OneNote in a circle, but also what, what you see as a disadvantage? I will put a timer in five minutes and then I, I get you back in the plenum here. And afterwards we'll just uh, discuss what the results in the circle were. Uh, if, we, if we don't have the time that everybody can, can put his pros and cons here, then there's also the telecom group, but I think with 15 or 16 people, we will be able to do that. So just a moment, I will split you in four rooms and it's done automatically. I get you back afterwards automatically as well. I think the ones who were in the, in the webcast last time know it. I will create the rooms now.
And I think you have a short uh, notice. You have to click on it and then you join the room and you're in. Time on five minutes. For those of you who look the replay of the webcast, you just have to uh, skip the next five minutes uh, and you will get to the next content. Hello? Can you talk any more when you uh, break out? Alfred? Ja. Yeah. Ah, hi. <laughs> Bist du aus der Gruppe schon zurückgekommen? Hi. <laughs> nee, ich habe keine uh, Nachricht bekommen für Du hast keine Nachricht bekommen, ups. Yeah. Komm, ja, du bist auch nicht in der, also sind, alle anderen sind irgendwie da rein, aber jetzt ist eh nur noch eine Minute. Jetzt äh, bei uns ist glaube ich, auch okay. nicht mehr. Jetzt musst du mit mir vorneben nehmen. Okay. <lacht> Was sagst du denn zu äh, OneNote als Tool für Circles? Ja, das ist sehr gut, weil es ist immer wieder, ähm, ja, die, die, die laufende Dokumentation, das ist so ähm, immer ein Ende ja. ja, ich hatte da bei euch im, im, äh, in dem einen Circle halt auch äh, Jive genutzt und wir hatten halt eine Jive-Seite pro mhm. Mitglied, aber das war halt auch zu weit, also gefühlt zu weit weg. Na, wenn ich das nicht ständig mir ausgedruckt hätte oder so, hätte ich irgendwie meine ganzen Sachen, die ich mir vorgenommen habe, nicht im Blick. Mhm. Also ich war beim letzten externen, äh, habe ich da auch beharrt, äh, Yammer zu nutzen für die Doku. Ja. Das ist, äh, 
auch wieder zu weit weg, bis wir über zwei Tools, dann waren wir in Skype, dann waren wir in Yammer. Und, ja. Ja. ja, und Yammer ist halt auch äh, nicht so gut für Dokumentation. Ne? Ja, das habe ich auch gemerkt, ja. Okay. ja Leute, ich hole gleich die, die fünf Minuten sind um, ich hole die Leute zurück. Sehr gut. Die haben jetzt 60 Sekunden quasi zurückzukommen. Martin, Martin Geisenheiner war noch eine offene Frage. Habe ich gesehen, ja. Habe ich mir markiert. Ja. Ja, ja. Nein, Nachteile. Ich weiß jetzt nicht, ob es Nachteile auch gibt. Ja, bin ich bin mal gespannt, was kommt. Gerade vielleicht mhm. auch von Leuten, die jetzt OneNote äh, noch gar nicht kennen. Ne? Ja, das ist für mich auch eine gute Schule, weil ich dann auch jetzt auch beim Reverse Mentoring ähm, ja. Ja. Beim, beim Guide-Netzwerk möchte ich auch mehr reinboxen. Genau. Ja, das ist ja auch ein bisschen Zielstellung, dass man so neben den, neben den, also so ein bisschen Upskilling in Bezug auf Tools auch nebenher mhm. macht, ne? so wie halt mhm. Videokonferencing auch. Ja. ja. So, mein ja. Moment. Now everybody comes back. I hope you had a good experience in the in the breakout groups. Um, Alfred pointed out in the chat that I just skipped or missed one question from Martin. Uh, and I just want to try to give an answer on that. I'm not sure if I understand it correctly. Martin wrote, do you have experience with the participants entering their results public, publicly? Uh, I'm not sure if you mean by publicly, Martin, publicly visible to anybody or publicly visible to the circle members? Uh, yes, to the circle members would be enough. From my experience, I think uh, many people or not, not many people are prepared to, to, to share everything they, they really uh, think or, or do as a result. Yeah. Well, we, in, our, in the circles I ran with uh, OneNote, I just left it open to the people. Like, uh, if, for example, if you have this exercise where you write the letter to your future self, uh, you also can decide if you read it loudly in the circle or if you just write it for your own. And in the same way, you can document it in OneNote or just document it somewhere else. So there's no force to share it. Uh, but the experience is that when you when you have the circle as a circle of trust, so nothing that is said in the circle leaves the circle, uh, normally people share all their documentation or most of the documentation in the circle. If it's not there, it's mostly because they skipped the exercise or they did not do the homework. Yeah, but my, my, sorry, my, my experience is um, often I, I get the questions, um, am I doing this right? Mm -hmm. And, and so the, the idea is people are not sure if what they do is right. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's not the, the, to be prepared to share things, but uh, to be unsecure if it's right what they did. Yeah, perhaps uh, the, the template for the VOL circles were the lean-in circles. And lean-in circles had an amount of uh, 8 to 12 people per circle and one moderator. And I think if you have 9 to 13 people, it's quite sort of anonymous you don't know everybody uh, like closely and perhaps this is not so uh, felt as a safe environment for sharing i think an advantage of having only four or five is that you have more this circle of trust feeling and you want to practice this nothing bad happens if you share it with this five people and then perhaps in the next step you share it with 50 and then 500 and then then 5000 and then the world or so But if you, if you don't feel comfortable with it, uh, I think it's totally okay to not document it there. Theoretically, you can also have password protected sites or pages in OneNote. And if someone wants to write a letter to his future self, but wants to protect it, it can also put a password on it. I never experienced it so far, but theoretically it's possible. So since everybody is back, perhaps let's spend the next 10 minutes. What was the discussion in the circle? So you can, if you want to share your video or open up your audio and just tell a little bit uh, from the breakout groups, what, what were your key points in terms of advantages or disadvantages with using OneNote in a circle? Who wants to start? Okay, if nobody starts, um, I think our, our team um, 
has uh, chosen me as uh, <laughs> to um, spokesman. Some, a spokesman, yeah. You, so you're <laughs> Magnus, or so I'm Magnus, yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, we have used um, one note already, or three. Um, so we, we we knew about uh, the, the advantages of one note in, in general, and. Um, uh, the, we, we were clear that um, having uh, OneNote as a tool for our circle is uh, the advantage that we have all content in one place um, and with teams also the discussion and the planning of the circle and maybe uh, also shared files uh, are in this one place. We have only one place to, to go. Um, but what could be a disadvantage is uh, what, what you uh, told before is there's a need that every uh, or all circle members uh, need to be open enough to uh, want sharing um, mm -hmm. their uh, their infos and um, in a one note um, and uh, if, if only uh, two of the five uh, do it in one note then uh, maybe this doesn't work so good um, as if all five will do it yeah Okay, thank you. Maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe if I can go on here because, um, hi, my name is Mario, me and Mark um, were in a breakout room and, and discussed the questions. And we thought that the people uh, not only need to be like um, open-minded to, to use um, OneNote, but uh, also able to use. And as we are uh, from companies where where this is not the case for everyone because um, yeah. different ages and so so it could be a little bit overwhelming um yeah in the first place if they if they are new to working out loud and then also never maybe used uh, one note or other tools like this this could be a disadvantage yeah. yeah totally true and and i think it has an up and a downside what you say because a lot of companies here in Germany, they use working out loud sort of a container to transport the idea of digital transformation or digital skills enabling as well. Mm -hmm. And always OneNote is a big killer app or big aha moment in terms of you can have documentation for your meetings, for your regular meetings, for your sure fixes and so on. And, and people learn about this tool and they don't only use it in a, in a circle context, but can use it immediately in their project work, in their department work. And it speeds them up and, and helps to not send so much emails and PDF documents attached. And for a lot of people, this is a, a first experience, even if you have to learn a little bit on how to use the tool. And this is in, in, in the Lanos experience where we have chosen to have a week zero because in the week zero, the facilitator has to make sure that everybody is able to use the tool. And if you decide to use OneNote or Zoom or Slack or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, you have a short training session where you make sure that everybody feels comfortable with the tool and is not already going into the work and perhaps someone's not able to access the content or be able to join the video conference or so. So this would lead us to the advantage of using it. Yeah, you empower the employees to work with, with OneNote and tools like this also in their regular work or in their daily job. Yeah. yeah. It's like digital, digital upskilling in parallel, yeah. Okay. Ma Mark, do you want to add something? No, that's exactly what we discussed. You have to take or think that it's not, or that working out loud is the first thing you want to enable and that is uh, a philosophy and that this one note is only a tool to enable or to document it and that's not being the people what you already mentioned are overwhelmed by like being okay now i'm doing working out loud and doing one note in one thing and then they're combining and in worst case they step back and say okay that's nothing for me true uh, absolutely agree and uh, uh, for me the main reason why i think it's important is the i showed you from this survey uh, the amount of people who run virtual only circles and, and there are a lot of people who are not used to run circles in a, in a virtual way at least across companies where you have the problem that not everybody's using the same tool and so on so so what i think is that 
that it might be that you have a bad circle experience just because of the tools are not in place to support this, these virtual circles. And if only 15% had answered that, that they meet virtually and 85% uh, meet in their circles face to face, I think this would have been no problem and would be a side chapter. But as the vast ma majority of circles meet at least uh, part of their, their weeklies um, virtual, I think it's an important thing. Yeah, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't be on the main stage. It's totally true what you say. Yeah, yeah but as, as you said, you have a week zero uh, uh, available, um, checking that the people have the tools and they understand the tools available. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think, most important to, to not to overwhelm the people with two, from the, because from the people who don't know what they are doing there, in worst case, they think working out loud is a tool and one note is a tool. And then they have to learn two tools in parallel. And that right. might be yeah. very difficult. Yeah. Totally agree. And this is, for me as a facilitator in the circle, it, it's sometimes it's really simple things that you have to do. Just make sure everybody puts out his smartphone, installs the app, is able to log in. Uh, you have a, a test video conference, make sure that the video works and, and the audio works and so on. And then you can set it aside. Then you can say, okay, we, we are prepared for one week to 12. Uh, everybody's at least at this moment able to join the video conference and so on and then you can focus on the process and, and not on the tool in, in the running circle so to say i just saw that gesine uh, uh, put the question if uh, how convenient is it to use OneNote for wall mobile um, i'm totally amazed by the mobile experience as well i use i i joined circle meetings on the ipad on the iphone uh, yes, these two and on the notebook and it's it's really cool how you can like uh, join video meetings but also at the same time share the one note right inside do the exercises all together uh, it's it's not quite the same video experience if you have a lot of people with, uh, like with zoom zoom is a little bit better but zoom is only a video conference tool you miss all the other things and then I think the 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 advantage of having an integrated solution like beats the, the little advantage of zoom as a video conferencing tool so perhaps as much for this question from gesine i was the van of the group so we started to be impressed that zoom is able to split up ourselves in groups so that was the first time experience it was great that we can learn what tools can do method wise and we were also very much impressed on one note i'm at the moment trying to support to promote the use of OneNote in the company. And it was very nice to see now a real good example where you can work with OneNote. So we appreciate this very much. I have only one question. Can you tell us a little bit more about this uh, copyright issue? I have not heard about this. So what can we do with working out loud, the brand and whatnot? Well, the best thing is to go on workingoutloud.com and scroll down to the bottom and then you have, there you have a page link called Terms of Use okay. um, where everything is explained. Uh, short version is that working out loud is a trademark term and by the terms of use, it's forbidden to use it as part of a product or offer a workshop or a coaching or support or training or something with, uh, with the name working out loud. You have to buy a license. Uh, to do it from December onwards, there is a will be a process of uh, educating wall coaches, and then it's similar, like you know, perhaps from Safe Agile framework or something like that. Uh, you have to have a license to use it. So this is the the uh, the trademark side, and the other side is the wall um, guides. Uh, these uh, twelve PDFs that are published. Um, they are published under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, non-disclosure uh, license. This means that you cannot change it. Like you cannot copy paste the content from the PDF to your wiki and change one exercise or put uh, another exercise inside because you want to promote your enterprise social network or something like that. If you want to change the content, uh, you have to buy a license. If you want to use it in a commercial context, you have to buy a license as well. So companies like Bosch or Siemens or so on, uh, ZF, who are using it as, as, as part of their personal or leadership training programs, uh, they license the content and then they are able to, to use it. It's only free to use in a uh, personal and private context. Thanks, very helpful. Okay. So we still have like two minutes. Anybody else who, who wants to share something from the breakout group? If 
this is not the case. I uh, just switched to my last slide. Uh, what are the next steps uh, in terms of uh, the Lanois guide? Uh, some of you already know. The version 1.0 will be released in English and German uh, on Monday, the 17th of September. Um, I'm currently looking for uh, individuals who want to run Circle in, in the fourth quarter 2018 and give feedback afterwards, and also for organizations who want to pilot it. Uh, as I said, it's free to use and free to uh, remix and share and, and modify it. Um, at the same day as the, the version one will be released, there will be a little release, release party, so to say. Uh, also from 4 to 5 p.m. Central European Summer Time, so same time uh, like today. You also have the Zoom link over here. So if you want to just put a save your date in your calendar and be a part of it again. Um, if you want to stay up to date, uh, follow Lanois on Twitter or join the user group. There are about 40 practitioners who are using it already. At the moment, it's in, in the alpha state, uh, but I think it will be more people coming up uh, until it's when it's released in version 1.0. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining today. Uh, I hope it was uh, somehow of a learning experience for you. I also learned a lot from your feedback. Thank you very much, and perhaps we see each other again at 17th of September. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks a lot, Simon. Yeah. I hope the the video on audio quality was okay. But yeah, as, as it long was great. Yeah. Yes. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Simon, hello. Are you still in, Simon? Yeah, what? Is Simon not there? No, Simon is schon weg, glaube ich. Okay. Okay. Good, ciao. Danke, ciao.